welcome Prince of Peace Your children dance before you Oh, we lift our song to you This is our deepest heart cry It is you we long to see Open hearts Burn for you Outstretched hands Reach for you We reach for you Cause you are welcome here Lord, you are welcome here You are welcome here Mighty God, mighty God You are welcome, Lord of Lords You are welcome, King of Kings You are welcome, Lord of Hosts You are welcome, Prince of Peace your children dance before you Lord, we lift this song to you Now this is our deepest heart cry It is you we long to see Open hearts Burn for you Outstretch hands to be here this morning. Welcome to Lighthouse. My name is Josh. I'm the student pastor. If this is your first Sunday, welcome, welcome, welcome. You could not pick a better place to be at this morning, or if it's your first time back in a while, welcome to this place. Would you join me in prayer really quick? Father, we just ask right now, God, that you would be welcomed into this place with open arms, Father. God, we ask for a move of you in this place, God, for you to be with us in every aspect of this service, God. Have your way. Change our lives this morning in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Yeah. Amen. You guys can go ahead and be seated. We could get the ushers to come forward this morning. Got a couple of announcements for you real quick. Um, we are, this is end of week two beginning of week three of the fast. So 
We have a week left. I'm seeing some amens from back there. One week left. We've almost got it. So um, just to encourage you guys to continue to push forward. One week left. Um, also, uh, Roots is tonight, our family discipleship class. We have something for everybody um, from adults, uh, men and women, to kids, to teenagers. We have something for everyone. So make sure you're back here tonight at uh, 6 o'clock for those classes. Um, also, membership classes. I know people have been asking, uh, you know, how do we become a member? What do we do to join? Uh, if you're interested in becoming a member of Lighthouse, and we would love, love, love to have you, there's a class starting on February 3rd. So um, it, this isn't a thing to make you jump through hoops or anything. To see, This is just so you know what you're getting, getting into. Uh, this is so you know what it really means to be a member of of a church and not just a warm body sitting in a seat. So um, make sure you're here. Pastor's going to be teaching that class. You're in for uh, an incredible treat. Anytime he's able to sit down with you and teach, you're going to be blown away. He is just, he's a brilliant man. Amen. <laughs> there were only like two amens. Y'all need to be at the class. That's all I'm saying. Part of being a member, you support your pastor no matter what. I mean, it just, even if the so also Super Sunday is starting February 3rd. So wear your favorite team jersey. Um, and then this is kind of our way that we're going to get connected to new families. Um, and Pastor said it over and over again. It's a way that connected families are going to get connected to other connected families. You know, a lot of us know each other and a lot of us have seen each other and we we pass and talking and we know each other's names, which is doing better than most people are. But we're not connected. So Super Sunday is going to be a time where uh, we're setting up some different houses to watch. The, that's what Super Sunday is, by the way. I don't, maybe there aren't enough hardcore NFL football fans. That's the Super Bowl is February 3rd. So we're going to set up some connect groups, um, go to somebody else's house, eat their food, mess up their stuff, and then go back home. It's perfect. So make sure it if you're new to this fellowship, if you're not as connected as you would like to be, this is your chance and this is your opportunity to do that. So don't miss out on that. Amen? Amen. Well, it's time to take up the regular tithe and the offering this morning. Um, a lot of people get really touchy and get really uptight when you start talking about money in church and you start uh, taking up uh, tithe and offering. And I know what really helped me is if you could ever wrap your mind around the fact that what you're sitting on and what is in your pocket is not yours to begin with. The, the best way I've ever heard a pastor ex explain it is if you think it's your money, go out and try and earn it without your eyes, without your hands, without the breath that God put inside of you. And if you can do that, then it can be your money. Otherwise, what you have is God's. And this is a place and a time where we can give it back to him. So uh, would you join me in prayer this morning? God, I just ask right now, Father, through the tithe and the offering that we're able to bring glory to you, God, in this place, Father. That what we're giving, Father, isn't just, uh, it's just, God, out of obedience to your word, Father, and, and doing what you've commanded us to do, Father. I ask that this isn't a heart issue, God, but it's just a matter of reaching down deep and blessing you this morning. In Jesus' name, and everybody said... Amen. God bless you as you give. God bless you this morning for, for giving and the offering today. We're going to move into a time service this morning before we go back into worship. We'll do something that I love to do. And uh, I'm going to get to do this this Sunday, next Sunday, and the Sunday after that. The next three Sundays, I'm going to be dedicating uh, babies. And so this morning, we're going to dedicate a precious little baby. And we may need to bring the lights up a little bit so everybody can see. Uh, but I'm going to ask <clears throat> Casey and Shannon if you'll come and join me down here. Look at these beautiful little girls. Look you here. We're going to dedicate little Miss Kempsey this morning. 
Look you there. Amen. Look at these beautiful gifts. Psalms 127 verse 3 says this, Sons are a heritage from the Lord and daughters. Children are a reward from Him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are sons and daughters born in one's youth. Blessed is a man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies in the gate. Now, I will tell you this. Casey and I have done our part on growing the church the old-fashioned way. We, some of you need to step it up a little bit. Many of you remember little Kimsey came a little early this year. Uh, she came a little too soon. She spent about a month in the NICU in the hospital, not quite a month, about two and a half weeks. And so uh, every time I hear that, I believe, and this is just me and my imagination, uh, I just believe that, that God had already told little Miss Kimsey who her parents were going to be, just how incredible they were, and the little sisters, the big sisters that she was going to have. And so I believe Kimsey just got in a hurry and thought, you know what, I just I want to get there as quick as I can. And so uh, she has been a miracle. She has been a gift from God. And uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 27, 28, we have Hannah's prayer. And it's what we're doing today. Uh, Casey and Shannon have been blessed with three beautiful girls and been blessed with little Miss Kimsey here. And so... Hannah prayed. She said, I pray for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I ask of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life, he will be given over to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. And that's what we're doing today. They're dedicating little Miss Kimsey back to the Lord and saying, God, we thank you for this gift. But we realize today that raising this child is much bigger than we are. That it's if we don't raise our child in the fear of God, and we don't raise our child with the respect, you know what, God, you're the only one that matters, then we miss it. And so I want to ask you to stand with me today, and we're going to, we have, I have a carnation this morning for Shannon, I'll give this to you, and a little rosebud for Miss Kimsey, and then I have something, girls, Selah, there's you, little rose, Karis. A carnation is unique in this, is that even when a carnation dies, it never loses its petals. This is to symbolize the love that Casey, you and Shannon will have for your daughter no matter what takes place. Even if there's times where she acts like her daddy, they're still going to love her. It's that undying love that regardless of what happens, they can always count on mom and dad's love. The rosebuds are to represent a life that's yet to bloom. And it's, it's up to you guys to make sure that you provide the necessary atmosphere so that your girls can become everything that God wants them to be in connection with what your dreams are for them. But it's up to you as the parents that there are times where you can't be the buddy, you can't be the favorite, you have to be mom and you have to be dad. But God will help you do that, and that's what we're doing here today is we're connecting with this family, praying that God will help them, that we will lift them up in prayer, and that God will give them the wisdom and the discernment they need to raise these three beautiful little girls so that God can be everything he needs to be in their life, and God will use them to impact their generation. Amen? Will you just stretch your hands this way and let us pray? goodness it makes me want to have a little girl somebody say amen boy if I could I would amen 
Anybody thankful to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Listen, I want us to move into a time of worship. God has done some amazing things this past two weeks. I know many of you have been fasting with us and many of you have been praying. And uh, I know sometimes when you begin to fast and from experience, it feels like when you start fasting, it feels like all hell breaks loose in your life. And many of us have made the statement the last few days, this will be the last time I fast. I'm not fasting anymore. I I don't know what, I mean, if this is what's going to happen when I fast, I I don't want to do it anymore. And I, and I understand that frustration and I can see that viewpoint, but I see it from a different perspective as well. I, there's some things that I've faced in the last two weeks that I'm glad that I was fasting and I was in a place spiritually. I, I'm glad I was spiritually where I was at the last two weeks and not where I was at six months ago. Because we got to realize this morning that life is going to happen whether you're fasting or not. That the enemy's out to kill, steal, and destroy your life, your family, your marriage, your business. And sin is no respecter of persons. And so sometimes it's highlighted a little more when we put a focus on God and we think, hey, this is, this is happening because I'm fasting. I believe sometimes things are happening. I do believe that. I do believe it is happening because we're fasting. Because God knows at this moment we can handle it. At this moment we're going to be okay. Because had it happened six months ago or two weeks ago or three weeks ago, we would have had a different outlook. And we might have said or done something that we would have regretted. But we realize that at this stage right now, we're, we're pretty dependent on God. And so I want us this morning to move into a time of worship. I'm going to be preaching a message this morning. I've never preached a message like this before. I've never done anything like this before. I believe God give, gave me something the last few days, spoke to my heart. And and this is what I'm going to need from every single person in this room. I'm going to need participation first. First of all, I'm going to need honesty. Second of all, I'm going to need participation. We're not streaming live this morning the sermon. And and you'll understand why when I get into my message. And so no one's going to be able to watch on TV. We're not even taping it. But I'm going to be asking you to be really honest, not just with me, but with everybody in this room this morning. And I I know that at the end of this message, you're going to be thankful that you participated in this. Because there's something that each and every one of us have to offer this morning. Every single person in this room, you have something to offer, and it's this. Your testimony. Before you get scared, oh, I'm not standing up and telling what, won't be any of that. Your testimony, your life is important to someone else today. And I believe that at the end of this service today, God's going to give us a fresh look on just how important, not just our life is right now, but the things that have happened to us in our life. And so I want to ask you as we move into a time of worship, I want to ask you just to begin to prepare your heart for what God wants to do in the next few moments. I want us to give him an offering this morning in our worship, not something that's just out of ritual or routine, but something that's really a sacrifice for us today. I want us to truly worship him today. I want us to just acknowledge God for who he is. At the end of this worship time, we're going to move into a time. There's Derek and Christy are here. Many of you know that Derek and Christy yesterday lost their home. They lost everything. Their their home completely burned to the ground. At the end of this worship time, we're going to take up an offering for them, and we're going to be praying for them. And so I want us just this worship time, can we just worship like God's the one we're worshiping to? Can we just worship like he deserves it? We need him this morning. So many of you walking through some things that you need your Heavenly Father to guide you and comfort you and bring peace. This is an opportunity for you just to move into a time of, you know what, Lord, I don't care who's here. I don't care who's around. No one's watching me on TV. It's going to be great. You can just worship your Savior this morning. We'll move into a time and give you an opportunity to pray and to give to this family and bless this family. So I want to just, will you just join me in prayer this morning as we move into a time of worship? Heavenly Father, I love you. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your truth. And God, I thank you for your presence that I feel right now. God, I'm asking you, Lord, to anoint me, to anoint this worship. Lead us into your presence today, God. Help us to receive from you today. 
God, help us to apply it to our life today, God. Heavenly Father, bless your people today. Honor our worship today, God. Lord, we give you our all. We give you everything inside of us, God. You are our Savior. You are our King. Help us today to give you the honor that you deserve this morning. And everybody said, amen. God bless you this morning as you worship.
Let's begin to worship this morning. Song to you, a key. Over time, let's sing it out. Sing, this is my song. Glory, sing it to you now. Say, this is my song. My song to the key. And I stand in. Today I don't have much, Lord, but I give everything, for this is my song, a song to you, King, this is my song to you.
It's a matter of the heart this morning. The word says that the Father is looking to and fro. He's constantly searching for his children that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Basically, that means this morning with everything that you know, if this morning you were to say, I don't know how to worship. I don't even know what that means. If you ask him, he'll he'll explain it to you. He'll show you. If it means simply closing your eyes and just thinking, Jesus, I just want to give my all to you today because I know it's going to matter. It's going to make a difference. It's as simple as that. But you have to start somewhere. Begin to lift your voices this morning. Sing it to him. Lord, I surrender all to you. All. I surrender, Lord. Lord, I everybody in this room to do something for me. I want you to lift your hands in a sign of surrender. This is not a Pentecostal thing. It's nothing more than you saying, I surrender. Doesn't make you a nut. Doesn't make you crazy. It's you saying right now, at this moment in your life, God, I surrender. 
Here it is. My hands are up. I'm not holding on to anything. I don't want to control anything. God, I surrender my life. I don't have time to even get into my marriage and my business. God, I surrender right now my life, everything that I am, the thoughts that are going through my mind, the battles I've been struggling with, the things that the enemy's been attacking me with this week. God, I surrender my life right now. I surrender it. God, I don't have the answer. I don't know what tomorrow holds. But God, I know right now that you are God. You're my Savior. You're the only one that can bring peace to my situation. You're the only one that can help me right now. God, I surrender. I give up. I surrender to you this morning. Hallelujah. How many feel God's presence this morning? In moments and seasons in our life, we would all agree this morning that you can look back on defining moments in your life with your relationship with God, and you can look to a time where you had to do just that. Maybe you didn't raise your hands. But spiritually, you, in your heart, you say, God, I surrender. I, I'm done. I finally give up. I'm tired of trying to fix it. That's when God can really start to do some things in your life, is when we surrender. Derek and Christy, I want to ask you to come and stand right here with me. I, I want to ask you this morning, just face the crowd right there. I, I need everyone in this room that you've had your home, you've had a, a fire in your home, you have walked through fire, whether it be a, a mom, a dad, you personally, your, your house has been destroyed by fire. You have experienced these same feelings. I need you to get out of your seat and come down here. If you're here this morning, get out of your seat, and I want you to stand in front of them. I'll just kind of come in and come around here. Just come in here close. Say, so, Pastor, why are you doing this? I'm doing this to let you know that you're not the only ones ever had to go through this, all right? We're going to pray for this couple. They have two beautiful kids. Jackson, 10 years old. Little Aubrey, seven. She's seven, is that right? Seven, eight. She's eight years old. It was overwhelming yesterday we're all just at the basket at the basketball gym just playing having a good time and then all of a sudden you know their house is burning their boys playing ball and then they have to inform him that you know he doesn't have anything everything's gone my boys had a hard time dealing with it Ty just went down the list of he, he did point out though that maybe his homework burn up and all that stuff <laughs> Ty said, that's, that's a good thing. But puts things into perspective. What I want us to do, I want us, we're going to pray for God to bless them. We've already put in motion. Our church is helping them. We're, we've got a place for them to live, and we're going to do that. Many of you have already dropped off clothes, and you've got furniture you're going to bring. You've already blessed them financially with money. We're going to take up another offering today. If you're not prepared to give today, that's fine. You'll, you can bring it by and, and give uh, this week, that'll be fine. But we're going we're gonna to pray over them and ask God to bless them today, and then we're going to take up an offering, and we'll move you into the rest of the service. But if you want to, feel free to come and fill in. But I want everybody here that your life has been affected by fire at one time or another. I want us to press in as a church family this morning, and I want us just to lift them up. Listen, church, they're hurting. They don't, they don't have anything else to give right now. They're just... That's the truth of it. Emotionally, they're, they're wiped out. It, right now, money and stuff is on the back burner. They emotionally need to feel their church family today. Can, can you help me do that this morning? Will you just stretch your hands this way? Those of you here, will you just gather in? Put your hands on them.